to welcome to role playing game Triticor, the final session of your prologue. Is what's going on? So, ready for that? Uh, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, do you have like a player recap? It's been a little while. Yeah, it has been a little while. Uh, can we do a recap? Just because uh, it's been like what, like two weeks, three weeks? Um. So the main thing that happened, um, you know. This is early game, so not much has happened. You are just training at the monastery still. I gave you your your higher level character sheet, but for right now, for about an hour, you're going to be your level one character now because you just got to level one finally. You went on this long journey and you spoke with like this crazy goat. Um, oh, yeah. So, and then you're like kind of, you know, we're enlightened as a monk in, in a way. And, um, Gained a lot of powers. Um, I'll be them uh, gifted to you, um, perhaps temporarily. You also grow in power as well, as we've seen. So you do reach higher levels as well. Um, but yeah, that also helps explain. You, you fell back in level once because I decided to go gritty mode. But yeah, also the uh, other thing about the session is we're going to try to squeeze like kind of two sessions into one. So it's going to be kind of quick paced, but um, it's kind of good. It'll work out because we had two shorter sessions that well, I had that planned. So yeah, for this session, basically, yeah, you got back with the, uh, you know, the knowledge that was gifted you. That's where we left off. So, um, you know, like you, you spoke with uh, Lorian, who was very proud of you. Um, and, you know, everyone at the monastery was impressed as well. Um, so this is actually going to be a quick episode. We're going to play, it's about a year now before campaign one actually begins. So uh, some years do pass here, like five years. Um, it's like 1239 uh, or 1238 maybe for half an hour here. And then we'll go to 1239 AL. That's the year. But, um, you know, during this time, you're recognized as like, um, basically a young master monk, you're like very impressive now, more so than ever. And uh, you're going to train some younger students if you want. Um, you've also learned very well at pottery at this point. <laughs> so you, you, you can train the students in pottery as well. Whatever you'd like to describe during this time uh, for your character actions. You're just in the, you know, the main monastery, kind of the humble one um, or in the uh, training ground area, like the uh, commons. And just dealing with some very young students, probably. Uh, maybe we should uh, start training them patience, and and that is in within the pottery. No, I want to make it now. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Pretty core. Show me pottery. Well, first of all, you get the uh. What is it? Not the lathe. Uh, the... Can I drink this? Yeah. What does it do? Uh, I wouldn't drink that unless you are ready for it. <laughs> it tastes terrible. Well, that's a mana potion. <laughs> all the kids make a rush. They're all laughing and cackling. Oh, dudes! Tell me that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, I rushed to his aid. You rushed to his aid. You drink the mana potion and he's kind of coughing on the floor. Oh. What are you going to try to do? Uh, We're going to help him. Pat do you like that potion is? Yeah, you're correct. You know what's going on. You were correct before. <laughs> so now of course he has it's a mana potion. Mana. Uh, I feel like he might have or like he... Sorry, what? Oh, ooh, you're you're taking some more now, huh? Oh, oh boy. Uh jeez. That feels fine. You, you know what it that feels makes does? me feel strong. You want to spar now? And he like goes oh, in and smacks you in the nuts. Um oh, what? <laughs> he's very short. He's just punching, and it hits you in the nuts. It's a hard eighteen. You can try to dodge it. Blocks. Blocks. You could try to dodge. 
Try, try to dodge, but it's a good strike. It's an 18. Uh, shit. Dexterity. Should I roll for that, then? If yeah, roll for it. You can. Uh, what is that? 14. Kerpow! And it hits you real good, and you fall over, and that really hurt. That was a really not a great teaching session you had. But we'll go ahead and end that uh, episode right there. There's another quick episode I do want to throw in here. Um, this one's going to involve a map I gave you. Actually, a couple. So, um, you know, really it would be... Uh, let's see. You know, it's not Lorien. Who's that? Who's the other master? Well, it doesn't matter. One of the masters, uh, probably Tardon, actually, the one who talks down to you, would say... Um, uh, at this point, you know, you're old enough, you can go on this journey down to Goldstaff, the town, and collect supplies. They, it's a regular journey that, uh, you know, master, young master monks make. So if you would go, um, that'd be great. And he gives you some maps and you can pick somebody to accompany you. If you remember any friends from the monastery, uh, you're free to, you know, choose them. Let's see. I'm going to find my... He hard on is like, take these maps. You have the map of the bamboo woods, uh, bamboo fields of mirror, and you have a gold staff. You can open the gold staff map as well. You will need these to complete your journey. Yeah, I mean. All right, oh. I got night. Do you have any questions before you depart? I think that's very long. Very long. Gold staff? Yeah. Okay. Slide that sucker off. Opening maps. Oh, thank you, Grand Master. Yeah. Well. Quest must be made. Thank you. <clears throat> they walk off. But he said you could pick a friend to accompany you, so if you'd like. You may. Oh, show me that map, too. Does it look fine? Oh, it doesn't yep. focus on your map. Let's see. Blurs your face. It'll never work. Yeah. All right. So we are at uh, Pale Castle, right? Um. So you're actually above that in the mountains to the right, kind of. It's kind of a, di a far distance through that rocky train. You're in the monastery there, nearby. So through the Forgotten Pass. So actually, oh yeah, the ma the monastery is not on that map exactly. But if you line it up with your Logdeer Valley map, it goes right above it. Which might be tricky, since it's a scroll. But yeah, the monastery is right above the Forgotten Pass. You know the Forgotten Pass is right south of where you're at. Okay. Alright, so, seeing this uh, map, Master, it looks like I have... Multiple paths that I may take. Really, there's uh, but one. Um, but I mean, he he would have told you, you know, you got to go down through the bamboo fields. So he gives you that map as well, um, which is, I believe, a smaller un unrolled map that was given. Yeah. So that one's useful. Um, and you're gonna you have to navigate your way through the the bamboo fields to build staff is going to be a, a large portion. Otherwise, you just kind of go south. Um, okay. You don't, you don't go through the Valley of Crows. Not advised. Uh, can be treacherous. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ryan. Kind of a dead end, yeah? Uh, my mom's calling real quick. I'm going to... 
pause. Yeah, we are back. Okay, I'll go ahead and find my place real quick here. Yeah, we left off. Yeah, you're going down on your quest, uh, down to Goldstaff. So you've got your maps. Um, really, yeah, and you you can pick a companion. Uh, do you do you have like a favorite? Uh, you know, student that you know. Uh, I had it written down. Let's see. Where did I put it? Uh, not there. Uh. Can you um, in addition, oh, what, what's that? Can you remind me of the, the names again? Because I had one. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll also mention real quick here that in addition, you guys uh, can get a donkey. Uh, there's a couple donkeys at like a stable nearby. Um, so you're also shown that by the master. Um, but yeah, let me grab a list here real quick. So, yeah, the peers of your age, you know, there's that elf girl, Aron, there's a several boys like Andrew Kane, David, Elon, and Luke. Um, but you know, I mean there's you can't really take the old masters. They're not going. There's other trainers similar to you, like Pon Pon and Kriston. And there's that one Kitsune boy, uh Sans. Um it's about it. That you know personally. Uh let's take uh the Elven girl. Yeah, um definitely so yeah Aron would be willing to go and you know you're able to locate her today in fact you know you can go ahead and make a make a perception check to see where she's at excuse me rumbling give my uh, ears though i think you're gonna win what's that no i'm just checking you said protection uh perception perception okay uh, I got 14. Yeah. Um, so, you know, she is like, uh, yeah, let's go. Um, I'm, I'm prepared for this journey as well. Uh, thank you for selecting me, Tritical. I'm honored. Well, thank you. I appreciate your acceptance on this journey of mine. It is my first one that I'm taking to go to Goldfun? Well, it should be mine as well, but we'll, we'll find a way. Well, I appreciate you. And what we must first do is go through the bamboo fields of Mir. Okay. And we get a donkey, I believe. I know where the stables are. And she'll lead you off. And you guys can head off down the forgotten path there. Um, basically to, yeah, the bamboo fields, like you're saying. Um, it is kind of a day's travel. So you guys set up camp along the way. And, you know, down between kind of the, well, down past kind of the, um, what have you, the first river there. There's actually like a cascade, uh, kind of a series of waterfalls, as it were. Um, and, yeah. I'm trying to find my map, actually. But yeah, you guys set up camp, and then eventually you do uh, head off into the the bamboo fields of Mir. So let me grab this. Yeah, you know, you do you settle up your donkeys and everything, and um, you basically have like an empty cart that you take with you. Um, and you know that you're basically going to pick up some form of taxes uh, from Gold Staff that goes to you guys. So. Uh, yeah, down the Forgotten Path. It takes basically two days, but you make it to um, past this quiet mountain pass. Um, it is a sunny day. It is kind of summertime, um, so it's hot and uh, gets hotter actually as you descend for the most part. Um, there's like uh, warm winds down here. Um, and uh, yeah, other than that, it's pretty quiet. But yeah, once you enter the bamboo forest, um, 
you do have your unique map to guide the way, but uh, the paths are cut through the bamboo, basically. It's pretty thick uh, around, except for this thin path. Um, so you basically done, go down a narrow corridor. The, the bamboo kind of rises up around you, eventually becoming this thick forest. And, uh, you know, eventually you make it to a clearing. Um, and, you know, there's maybe like a figure that appears off to the right side. There's like a fork up ahead. Or you could go like straight left or right, and uh, you can make a perception check. Let's see. I need to get this on a level surface. Um. Ah, what was that? Ah, I got a eleven. Uh, yes, you're able to see, it looks like some animals skirting off now away from you, um, kind of to the left side. Um, but you need to basically, you know, decide what you're going to do from here. You have this fork in the road. Uh, all right. Facing off two of our two maps. It looks like we are going down the Forgotten Pass. Yeah. And we are in the bamboo forest now. Okay. And if we are to get to Gold Staff, yeah. I believe we should go straight. Ooh, okay. Let's do that. Let's see here. And um, so, yeah, you go straight, and uh, the path kind of curves around uh, to the right, as it were. Eventually, you come to another fork in the road. Um, this time you can either go kind of, it goes Justin's off to the right or to the left. And um, yeah, you'd have to, what's there? After some time to travel, so it probably gets later in the day. At this point, maybe evening. There's a, there's a sweet scent of bamboo amongst the air. Uh, left or right? We take a left. Lovely. So you navigate successfully through the tricky maze of the, the woods of the bamboo. And, you know, eventually you, you make it to um, the, the humble town of Goldstaff. So there's a, there's a wooden fence about. And there's a large tower, which is the main feature hereof. But uh, there's some gu guards that stand at the uh, gate, uh, although the gate's open. Uh, you can... You can mosey on in as you please it would seem um but yeah you need to go talk to some officials you imagine at the tower to collect your supplies i approach the guards and say i'm here with the monasteries we are here to collect our supplies may we enter um let's see here i've got this this is probably appropriate the guards are like uh oh of course, uh, the uh, the monks from the monastery. Yes, uh, how was your journey, Manter? It was uh, fruitful. We made it here with no harm. Thank you. Wow, this is good news. Good to meet you. Uh, I'm Peter. If you need any assistance, but please bless, uh, please bless us and and anyone who needs the blessing of your great wisdom, as you are here for a short time. Thank you for your access. I hope that, or I deem that your protection will be upon you with your aura and Thank you. your service. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you guys can go into the town. Um, eventually you'll find a clerk near the tower who uh, kind of serves the lord of the town as it were. And he, uh, He's a baron of East Farley Ong. My name is Ratterson Clinsfield. I can get you the supplies you need, young monk. I believe that's why you're here, of course. Is it not? Yes, of course, Ratterson. We need supplies for our monastery. We need to feed our people and keep the peace. And you definitely see, you know, like there's some farms about, little thatched roof cottages and people working. Uh, you know, there's 
various trades, it would seem. You see some shoemakers uh, with some fine shoes in a shop and various other merchants about. Um, but yeah, eventually you he gives you, he goes around back, eventually returns with a couple barrels full of like grains and fruit and some, you know, like deer skins and wicker baskets of food. You load everything onto your donkey cart and you can take it back to the first word. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just going to breeze past this scene as well. You, you do a great job. So um, if there's anything else you want to add, though, actually, you, you totally can. Well, thank you, Ryder. Uh, right, right, uh, yeah, Ryderson or something. Ryderson, yeah. Thank you, right. Ryder. You have been very kind. <clears throat> the monastery is very grateful. We shall be on our way. And uh, yeah, you guys, you know, definitely make it back. At this point, actually, is the time that more time passes. So it would be like definitely 1239 for sure, kind of. Uh, towards the end of the year or so. Um, so with this one, Triticor, I guess I should ask, you probably want would want to shave your head for a very important ceremony, right? Uh, yes. Cus yeah, so, yeah uh, as is customary. Uh, you'll be a key figure as well. So kind of in the swirling smoke of this ceremony, of cindering pillars of incense and bundled leaves, you... Triticor are recognized as a young monk, finally, uh, by all, and the grand masters especially. As Lorien kind of says, yes, this is Triticor, the monk. And uh, this is kind of your time. Uh, you kind of stand on this podium before all your peers and the younger students. Um, it's a ceremony in the Grand Pagoda. Uh, you are anointed with oil and blessed by the words of the monks. Uh, the word will watch over you on your unique calling. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to do specifically during this time. Uh, I humbly stay silent and I accept this uh, great privilege and honor. Um, and everyone has a meditation afterwards and... You know, there's this great sense of honor for you, especially, but, you know, the golden roofs of the pagodas shimmer. And sometime afterwards, um, actually soon afterwards, um, right before essentially our first campaign begins, a couple of months maybe. Um, so it would actually be winter of 1239, the end of the, the end of the year towards winter. Um, so, outside the window, you would see a very strange sight, uh, kind of what you would imagine perhaps a circus to be. There are flowing flags, men riding up the mountainside on horseback, dressed in strange garb, um, trumpets and fanfare sounding uh, somewhat loudly, as if to announce uh, they, their arrival, um, but they remain respectful at the same time um, to the monastery grounds and any meditation. Uh, so there's a muted fanfare, as it were. The uh, men dismount and approach the main pagoda. Uh, you see the masters welcoming them. And it all happens rather quickly. You can uh, run out to see it closer if you'd like. Uh, I think I will do, uh, let's see, I guess investigation check. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. You know, you definitely are going to notice either way. A couple of servants are waiting nearby, tying up their horses, um, like finely dressed, like attendants with fancy hats. And uh, yeah, what do you roll? Um, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, you notice. You know, there must be dozens of these magnificent animals, uh, horses and mules that they're all attending to there, as well as the same number of. Fancy men and knights in shining armor who kind of descend into the Grandmaster's Pagoda. Uh, and you guys kind of journey over there to take a closer look. Um, and yeah, you get a good look at them all. But they are quickly ushered in by Florian and the others. Um, however, since everyone kind of gathers around, uh, before you know it, Master Lorian uh, calls you up kind of to the, uh, the main entryway to the Grand Pagoda. 
He says, come here, Tritico. What is the Grandmaster? What is the Grandmaster? So, you, oh, oh, what is it? Um, well, Tritico, it is the great honor of a visit from the High King of Farleon. But he kind of whispers this to you and kind of turns to all the students nearby and uh, says, Lee, come, tell everyone. And Lee kind of walks over there and says, uh, grabbing you on one shoulder, he says, for being the strongest and beating up those other kids in the sparring matchups. And Tardon, who's nearby, will also say, grabbing you kind of on the other shoulder, uh, for being a nuisance, but having decent rhetoric skills as well. And uh, he smiles and kind of winks at you. Um, but, uh, you know, similarly, the Grandmaster there, Lorian. Got to put on my beard. Oh, sorry. That's probably loud. Uh, Lorian <laughs> leans over and whispers to you. Uh, the foreseeable reason you are chosen is because you have a rare gift for being able to meet with the great spirits of the realm. Such as the wise old Vendalion. Vendalion? Is this true? The wise old goat. You spoke with him. Did you not? Then Lorian says aloud, For being wise and courageous, at times, unlike many who have only one such quality in abundance amount, but be safe, my child. They usher you inside, away from the others. Uh, furthermore, as you guys kind of walk through the pagodas, uh, Lorian says to you, to further explain your quest, you have become the chosen monk of Farleo. You will live a life like the old master Zenda, defending humanity and providing spiritual guiding to all the people of the world beyond these lands of the first word. Does that mean I am a true monk guru? You are a young monk in recognition, but you are a very talented monk, Tritico. One day when you return, you will be crowned a high elder monk, foregoing many, perhaps, titles, depending on your travels. I have great faith in you. And while motioning you through a door into a row of uh, strange silver encased humanoids, knights in armor, um, you know, many with long, actually blonde manes, not gray like the one I have, and one darker with a shaved skull, one radiant gentleman in fine robes with a strange golden headband. He reminds you of your elven classmate. This man, he looks human yet has a strange aura about him. But you notice this all at once. There are many knights that take your eye, especially. Uh, all except that strange wealthy man. They're all basically sitting on the floor there and looking at you. Um, this man is a lord of Farleon, and the others are knights of the word. He was an attendant to the king. They all travel as his servants. But the highest rank besides the knight and the commander, Abraham, who you also meet at this time, was a very, uh, very strong, red-bearded man who uh, shakes her hand and says, I am Abraham. Great to meet you, sir. Abraham, I've heard of you. I've heard stories of you traveling and conquering and helping people. Oh, you, well, thank you. you have great respect within our uh, clan. What can we do for you? Well, this is my respect to you as well. I believe we will be traveling together, but I leave it to the masters to speak more. Um, so yes, the uh, the master, Lorian, does explain more to you. These are the knights of the reformed, the reformed word, knights of the second word. Although they just call it the word, remember the great verses, first reference I and the second am. They are not really so different. The second word was required, I think, to protect the first. They continue to protect us and all 
that remains of humanity, as will you now. So go with them and learn as much as you can. Bring back those words that you learned to us. It is believed the word was the first thing to exist in these lands, for even the great trees of life. So, you know, there's definitely a pause here. Um, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no. Uh, I just do have a question, though. Yeah. Um, so this is like a flashback before I actually worked with uh, Abraham in the, like, the campaign that we did earlier. Yes, it's fine to have heard about him, though, but um, yes. Um, yeah, this is your prologue. Okay. And I'm going to tie it in all nicely for you soon here. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, Abraham, like, I've already worked with Abraham. So, so yes, this is how you met Abraham. Okay. First time you really met him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and all these knights. You've never seen, like, a knight before, probably, except for the guards and gold staff and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, the places, perhaps. But, uh, you know, suddenly there is kind of like a woodwind and a fanfare with drums. The knights bow their heads and door open to reveal uh, this strange man with a golden aura and dressed in golden robes and adorned in a crown who he is not quite so gray, a bit more white or golden, silvery, or blonde. He seems to glow. He enters the room with sunlight. And uh, his features are so strange. He has uh, light hair and a long nose and chin. He has a very calming voice, but his appearance is somewhat like ambiguous, as it were. But he speaks to you, Tredicor, and it calms you. It is my honor to meet with you. For there have been many things which I have heard about you. The king of Farleon, the high king, this man glows with a radiant skin and wears a shimmering crown. He's ador adorned in all manner of golden leaf robes, but um, tells you you will go on a very important spiritual quest, assisting the Knights of the Word. Uh, and the masters agree, yes, bring peace where you can. Help the Knight Commanders and his troops. You're not bound to the Word. You should travel with them and protect them as best you can and help them in their quest to save humanity. Although your path might be different, for your skills are different as well, Tridicor. Remember this, your goals are as one. And uh, yeah, you know, anything you'd like to add? Say back to them. I am humbled by your request and quest that you are uh, embarking on me. I was not expecting such a humble and uh, honorable quest that I shall go on. I am, honored, I am honored that you have chosen me. I will do my best and I will complete whatever task you have set upon me. Of course, Tridicor. It is my honor as well to see you, the chosen of Venda Leon. As you may know, humanity is in a desperate situation. We are almost entirely limited to these territories by the Aragoldian Empire of the Elves. We need every able body we can to train to be a knight, defend the people of the villages, keep this secret. We believe an elf attack is coming. And our defense on the Western Front in the Field of Spine is growing weak. They need you now more than ever, Tridicor. Please give my men your spiritual guidance. For the people of your monastery are closer to the word than anyone else. I believe you can bring greatness in the breath of the word. So actually at this time, the king will give you the map of Farleon. You can open that map as well. You're going to need this as you journey on this quest with the knights. They have their copies as well. Here you will be able to see what I mean by the field of spines and the battlefront of the eternal war. How do you read map? 
Yes. How how do you read a map? Uh, so I know the mushroom woods. Uh, let's see, old continent. Okay, I see. And you know, thus it was that you met Abraham, the commander of the Knights of the Second Word. You also met the High King of all Farleon, albeit briefly. Uh, he was, you know, he seemed a very kind, but almost mystical man. Um, hey, Ryan. You know, yeah? Uh, can I just actually look at this map for a minute? Yeah. Because it's really, it's really pretty. Heck yeah, that's all of your far on. What? Did you print this or draw it? Uh, I, well, I printed that. I also drew it, but... I have various copies. And then, doused it in tea, rung it up, packed those little spindly sticks on there, and hold it a day. <laughs> Oh, uh, craftsmen so of the cool. village are oh. very skilled. Thank you. They okay. are humbled, I'm sure. Well, yeah, so, you know, there is a procession down the mountain. Uh, all the monks wave goodbye and cheer uh, the royal procession off, including the uh, elder monks. Oh, be safe, Triticol. And, uh, you know, you guys leave in a haste. And uh, everybody cheers you away. And uh, it takes several days. You travel down the forgotten road again. And through a difficult and treacherous uh, valley of crows and fairy woods with very large mushrooms near the tail end, you set up camp several times. You can see the kingdom below uh, as you descend through the mountains. Uh, vast fields and small cottages streams and lakes dotted out but it takes some time zigging and zagging through the forgotten mountains uh, avoiding steep hills following shoddy trails and making camp uh, for many nights uh, maybe four nights it takes you till you eventually take the king to the gates of the uh, pale kingdom uh, the capital of Farleon, the uh, biggest structure you've ever seen up close the towers within this great castle of stone and plaster uh, but uh yeah there's you know rising stone walls all throughout and it definitely amazes you uh, but the knights do not enter with the king instead um the servants depart along with the king and you and your party make your way off through the lower town you travel until nightfall and make haste towards your destiny perhaps uh, Find less expensive lodgings on the outskirts of the Mushroom Woods to the north in the small town of Flogmere. Uh, nothing more than a rundown church and an old inn wouldn't be shown on a map and several farmsteads. Um, so I will go ahead and summarize kind of your journey onward through this part for a little bit here uh, for the sake of brevity um, as we end your summary today. Uh, in the morning, uh, your new caravan begins down the down the mushroom woods, as it were. Um, all these knights in similar armor to Abraham uh, carry flags, lots of gear, extra pack mules with like uh, just tons of extra equipment, rations, and weapons, and armor. And uh, there is uh, several knights you meet, uh, Kim Tom. Kind of this uh, younger man who's stout and uh, a bit rude, honestly. There's a uh, Gertrude, a, a lady that you meet who's also a knight traveling with them. Uh, she's uh, a bit more serious, but actually she makes some jokes sometimes, you come to learn. Emma's uh, kind of a quiet, quieter man. He's the, uh, the bald one uh, you met earlier. So yeah, you know, as you guys go through the mushroom woods, essentially it is this thick land of, you know, mushrooms, but 
Any threats that approach are pretty much taken care of in large part by the knights, although you attempt to offer your assistance and grow over time in your own way as a warrior during this travel as well. Uh, there is one main main fight I'd like to highlight, certainly, but it will come in just a moment. Uh, after you essentially escape the mushroom woods after days of travel northward, you near rounds about Fisherman's Harbor, which may be seen on a map. Um, you see the banks of the great sea or waters beyond. You've never seen something so vast. This huge smelling town. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you see short straw houses and green fields, uh, large mushrooms and large trees looming overheads and bringing shade to farmers. Um, the 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 mushroom road eventually ends, and you guys head off on a forbidden path, really, that only the knights must walk along. No peasants would dare tread on these deserted lands. Um, you know, the lake which spans the horizon to the north gives way to a exceedingly flat and desolate wasteland to the west as well. Um, and this is known as the Field of Spines. You travel towards Dungle Fort, which is a rung down fort. Uh, the last stop you'll make before the real quest begins and things start to get serious. So you make camp, you know, with them kind of in this desert land, uh, miles away from the lake to the west. You know your real quest will begin after you reach Dungle Fort. And uh, it's only a few days travel at this point. Your journey has been long and you have learned much. Is there anything you'd like to add for the words or Abraham himself who says, thank you for traveling with us. You are a boon to us, Tretico. I am only glad that I am able to experience the world and see what problems have been cased and cursed this uh, land and what we can do to fix it. You know, that's a great point, actually, because I should have mentioned as you left kind of the Pale Castle region, you did see a lot of plague and uh, famine and bad things happening kind of around Riversdale area near the Pale region. You're a little bit away from that now, but even here, you know, it's a very poor area. You've been to, you know, you know, Abraham will probably say, well, we've been through the poor regions. Uh, uh, you should see some big cities, but... Yes, we do plan to help these people, but it's not all so bad as this, you know. It's something well, to look forward to. It is something that I am glad that I have witnessed so I can help the people around me. I am honored by your presence, Tredricor. Can you bless us again for the night? And I do a ceremony with a sage and I bless them with the smoke to clear them with their minds and their worries. And I go to each and every single one of them and do a very, very small chant. And I let them release all of their uh, dark energy. Thank you, Tridikor. That was amazing, as always. It's great to have you here. Well, must be off to bed. And uh, Emmers will take first watch. So yeah, you know what? As you guys depart in the morning, really, is when things start to get serious. You know you're not too far from Dungle Fort, which is your main goal. But before you get there, your crew is going to be attacked out of nowhere by a slaughtering gang of goblins. And you know, it looks like a kind of 10 goblins kind of rush out from behind this pillar this spine, which kind of begins to become a main feature of this region, actually. These towering spindle-like, um, like mountainous spires that, like a tower, just kind of rise up. Like a point. It's a strange, it's like a, yeah, it's like a stalagmite, but like large and it's just like massive. And, uh, you know, there's sand all over it as well. So can't really tell. It's just like made of earth. Um, there's nothing above to drip down to form it either. So there's just, this is the field of spines. There's just like these jagged, rocky fingers that jut out everywhere. And behind one of them, from behind one of them, 
come this gang of goblins that attack your crew. You know, you've got many knights who all whip out their swords and begin defending themselves against these green, deformed creatures that run and try to attack you and kind of grab one of the knights and tie them up uh, in shock. The others kind of quickly come to his aid. You can go ahead and roll initiative, actually, and describe how you'd like to react here, Triticor. Uh, yeah, there's another uh, goblin actually who's fast. 18. Oh, you're on 18? So you're you're probably uh, actually the fastest next. So except for this one goblin who's trying to like subdue one of the knights and tie them up, all the other knights are trying to free them, but you are the quickest, essentially. What are you going to do? Uh... Goblins are like I'm. All right, so I am gonna do my unarmored movement with my martial arts, and I am gonna go towards the first one that I see, and I am gonna do my uh, fear you blows. Mm, 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 mm. Boom, 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 boom. Which yeah, you can definitely uh, do that. And actually, I think uh, since I'm level one now, I can do two targets. Nice. So yeah, you can hit, you know, two goblins. Go ahead and roll for your uh, hit. Uh, 15. Yeah, that's definitely going to hit. Um, go ahead and roll again for the other one. Uh, 21. Yeah, you're, you're getting both these goblins. Roll your damage. Uh, I believe it's a, what, a D5? Or 6? Yes, D6. And go ahead and, or actually, I think it's a D4, honestly. No, it's a D6, you're right. Okay. So, once again, I need to just pull it out. Let's go with a D6 for now. And, um... Uh, five for the first one. Nice. So yeah, you know, that guy kind of seems like dizzied and knocked out for a bit. You kind of get a nice, good hit on him. Uh, what's the other one? Two. <clears throat> yeah, that guy, you know, definitely like scatters him back, but he kind of gets up and tries to grab this other knight again. Um, who's like actually Emmers. He's being like kind of partially tied up by this rope randomly. Uh, the other knights are going to, you know, take their swings at these goblins and make decent headway, kind of whack it into them as other goblins kind of attack with, like, ah, little little small axes and, like, jump up onto Abraham, take wicked blows at him, denting his armor. Um, but, you know, the knights seem to be making good headway and kind of bending off these goblins. Um, you can go ahead and make uh, another turn, actually. Well, actually, one goblin will attack you. Let's see how he does. He is going to hit you. And that's the wrong dice. So you're going to take actually significant damage from that. Uh, four damage. This goblin just kind of stabs you with this stake kind of in the back, I would say. Ugh, dealing like massive damage to you. You're definitely bleeding at this point, but you can still take your turn and make an action. Although, you know, if you want to describe anything, uh, you're definitely going to be like hurting right here. Because you don't have too much health. Um, but it's not going to matter too much, honestly. You can just roll. Well, my HP is, what, 11? Yeah. Uh, but, okay. I take that I take that blow. You can see me sitting down, or kneeling down, with pain and uh, agony. I look up at this goblin, and I spit blood straight out, right at his face. I say, nice. you'll regret this. Yeah, so, I am, yeah. I am a very peaceful person, but this will <laughs> not do. And I go up and I do a punch, like an uppercut, right? <laughs> in the yes. And let's see if it works. I love it. Uh, a 20, but not natural. This goblin still goes flying back against this uh, this spine. 
uh, like this spire that I described, and he just kind of hits the wall and like skunks down. <laughs> um, he kind of like uh, is twitching there for a second. You you definitely got a nasty hit on him. You can roll your damage for that. Yeah. Let's see. He's not. He doesn't seem uh, dead, but he seems out for a second. Six. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That that's massive damage. Actually, you. He might be. He might be out cold for the fight. He might be dead. You're not sure. But he looks like he's twitching. Um, <laughs> but it is at this point, you know. And like I mentioned, you know, that's a significant blow. So you described it super well. If it was a little more, it might have just knocked you out, honestly, with some gritty rules that I'm uh, seeing. Because if that was half your hit points, then that would have been nasty. Um, but it was almost that, which is still nasty. Regardless, there are more nasty goblins that are popping out from around various spires now. And their numbers are just completely overwhelming you and the other knights at this point. Um, so there's like probably going to be three goblins coming up all around you at all sides. Maybe another one kind of approaching with kind of a longer sword that he's kind of hefting around, hard to carry, taking wild swings at people. Um, go ahead and make some dexterity dodges as these attacks just wildly come in at you. Uh, can I describe my blocks? You sure can. I'd love it. Uh, so <laughs> as this goblin is uh, doing his sloppy broadsword swings at me, I use my uh, legs as like kicking them away from me. And so as this goblin comes towards me, I bring up my leg and I just do a broad a kick and I try to kick it away from me and then as the other one comes I do a nice little uh block with my uh <laughs> forearm yeah. right here. Ah, ah, oh. uh, uh, yeah I I rolled a a seven okay you can roll a couple more you're definitely gonna take a cut from that one though like you're yeah. bleeding on your arms now uh I rolled a 20 not natural yeah, so you're definitely able to kick the larger blade, and then you take another couple cuts, though, I would say, uh, on either side. Like, one of them dealing decent damage, like two extra damage to you, and another one that is actually going to deal more damage as well, like three damage. So really, the way this fight's ending, regardless, is you, the goblins are capturing you and the other knights and everybody. You're going to be knocked out cold. You're going to be dragged, tied up, taken underground, and forced to march in these deep tunnels below the fine of the the field of, the fields of spines there, and um, so let's see here. Yeah, you're also gagged and unconscious for a portion, and you are basically dying during this time. Another way to say it, you're captured by these goblins before you reach your destination of Dunglefort, uh, just taken as prisoners underground in these tunnels. And let me go ahead and transition into your recap here. Captured, beaten, chained, and chained up, and you're marching for days through these dark tunnels underground. A uh, strange, um, you know, time it is for you indeed. You're, you're separated from the other knights, totally isolated for a time, and you have no idea where you are. You've been underground for so so many days or, or weeks, or you don't even know. Um, Time is Strange. not even like even a construct. <laughs> yeah, if you want to act out anything here, you totally can. There's Days like goblins are. Oh, oh, shut up. Days have gone on and on. Weeks, hours. I have no idea. I have no uh, idea of what time is anymore. I have been down here with the goblins in the darkness, listening to them, laughing, cackling, and torturing us. Shut up, human! I'll smack you again. And uh, you know, terribly, <laughs> the food is vile and rotten. I don't know how much longer me and my comrades can last. And you look around to see you don't know where your comrades, the other knights, were taken, but you're just there with like several other goblins in a row that have you prisoner. Eventually, though. At a campfire, as you guys are resting and you're chained up, and you're probably perhaps resting until you are rescued by a strange band of adventurers. One of them, 
or a crest of the second knights of the word, like Abraham, the commander, and your other traveling companions. You were recently, you know, separated from them, like we mentioned. Um, you are not sure where anyone else was at this point, but Kor is this is the name of this knight of the word who saves you. And by the way, I uh, totally encourage you to take some notes here. I'm going to recap your whole adventure, so uh, you can use these to refresh yourself later. So after you're rescued by these adventurers, including Kor, the Knight of the Word, uh, who is, you know, in league with Abraham, certainly, um, they save you and uh, you travel through the through the dark tunnels a bit more in search of Abraham, your commander, who was also just uh, rescued uh, by Kor. So you guys all meet up together and you're looking for a number of other men, other knights. Uh, none of the others were saved here. In the tunnels yet um but you travel with them uh, a strange red bearded large giant of a man and a couple other adventurers uh, one in a small robe and an elf with long pale hair and dark leather armor who you come to know as lorna of the sixth <laughs> world um you delve deeper into the dungeon and you find your comrades and the others but uh, you eventually past some wicked gates and trials, find a dark ritual, and your companions are killed by this dark flame that burns as a red-hot cinder in your bodies, <laughs> hearts, Sorry. and minds, causing all of you adventurers to pass out. You run, however. You alone escape into the dark of the dungeon and sleep in the glowing mushroom grove. You later... Uh, Unable to find your comrades, venture out into the woods and happen to meet Glaforin, the Elven Ranger, who tells you he has run away from Aragold and tells you much of his life. You travel together and meet with the Elder Wood, a mystic and ancient tree who speaks to Glaforin in a strange fairy tongue. Uh, escaping these uh, gloomy and mystical woods, you accompany him to the burning wood, this ashen wasteland. Along the way, you fight uh, zombies of ash and find the washing wilt, which was required to save the other adventurers who were at the inn at the riverside and who were subsequently healed, thanks to you, by an elven healer uh, from the town. Um, Kor is satisfied with this as you repay the adventurers uh, who were nearly burned to death by that dark flame. And, you know, they helped him to save all the knights and we've saved their lives now. And, you know, we also repay them in other ways with gold. But, uh, you know, this is great, obviously. Um, so after failing to enter the heart of the burning wood with Glafor and the ranger, a circus arrives in the strange wood elf village by the riverside in the pine grove, and Triticor wins a tournament therein. Um, the elf Lorna and the others are rescued by, the, by your flower. And uh, not before long though, the village is actually raided by dark elves from Aragold with their distinctive elegant elven armor piercing as silhouettes behind the flames of the village and the circus. You don't know why, but you flee with the Knights of the Word. The cart is bound though, eventually by the roots of some strange tree. Lorna is able to catch up with you. You see the elven healer again briefly who drops her off of a grand white horse. She joins you in the party and you flee the woods on foot, unable to save your cart. Um, you flee the Aragoldian army of elves as well. And you decide to, you know, continue. Uh, and it is a long journey through the burning wood for sure, these ashen lands. You lost Glaforin, the ranger, unfortunately, uh, before you left the town in a rush. Uh, you've also gotten separated from Abraham along that journey and half of the other nights. Uh, there are many freed slaves who you do bring back, though, to Jordan uh, to, you know, Kor's great pleasure. But you guys really plan to go back and save Abraham and the others who they never make it to Jordan. Uh, there's also a monster who impales one of the freed men. You guys hold a funeral in Jordan town. That's not even the full recap, though. Shortly here, we're going to join Lorna and we're going to do another short little quest here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We're going to have a short break. We're going to come back and play with Lorna for another like little hour, a little under an hour, probably. Uh, anything you'd like to say here? That was uh, just a recap, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that was a recap. <laughs> Forgot how much we've done. <laughs>
Yeah, you've done a lot. You're like, I think on level three now. I might have gotten you to level three a little bit preemptively, but it's fine. You can start on level three. There'll uh, also be another character. I don't know if you have your, are you level three? No, I'm level one. I gave you, an, oh, you'll get your new sheet now. Your leveled up sheet, remember? Do you have that? Yeah, it's my old one that you gave yeah. me. Yeah, your old one. Oh, it's going to be... It is level Are you three. level three? Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. 